Hey, my name is Javi, and this is not an illegal shipment of drugs. This is a pre-production sample of the Heat Boys Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Leonardo. A figure so good that it made me give a shit about the Ninja Turtles. Full disclosure, I did get this for free from Heat Boys themselves. Link in the description if you're interested. I have no idea how this figure's final box looks like, but I'd hope it's a beautiful box to match the beauty of this figure. The painting and the sculpting on this thing is amazing. This is a heavily mechanized redesign of Leonardo. Who is no one's favorite turtle? I'm more of a rap guy myself. But Jamie, I thought you didn't give a shit about the Ninja Turtles! I don't either. Do you have to give a shit to have a favorite? I didn't know that. I'm not a turtle hater, just didn't grow up around it as much as I did Transformers. But enough about Transformers, let's talk about Gundam? <laughs> All the Tismos are out today. Now, I'm not gonna make any definitive statements, but it seems to me that this design is heavily influenced by Gundam. From the proportions, the various decals, just the style of panel lining that you see here, all very G-word to me. Even that empty slot on the back of the figure reminds me of how you plug the backpack into the Gundam Epion. And talking about the back, how the shell did I forget this? That plugs right into here? And isn't that a beauty? But the shell's got a few tricks up its shell. This thruster portion can extend out. These panels open up, and this opens up to reveal a canister of dangerous chemicals. En route to Ohio. Too soon? The details just keep on coming. Just feast your eyes on all that stuff. But this canister isn't really a canister at all. That's a chair for a pilot, which is attached to a runner. As if the mobile suit connection wasn't strong enough. As you can see, the runner contains a seated pilot, a standing Leonardo with his katana, and four dots that I still don't know what they are. But according to this handy note provided by Heat Boys themselves, the first run of this figure includes this clear runner part that I think looks a a lot better than the plain black. Also, one of these dots just fell off. You got another thing coming if you think I'm bringing out the cutters again. Ah, shit, I'm bringing out the cutters again. Pilot looks great in the seat. And while we have this piece of paper out, it contains a handy list of the figure's many, many accessories, which are... <sighs> Two die-cast metal katanas, two katana sheets, two die-cast daggers, two revolvers. What? Yeah, everyone remembers Leonardo's iconic weapon. Revolver features a rotating magazine. <laughs> and we mustn't forget his other iconic weapon, a rifle. What? Which you could actually load up with these included any mutation potions. Which look really cool, by the way. Does that mean this giant robot goes around forcibly TFing people? I know some people are into that. A multifunctional tactical shield, which came packaged in three parts for a reason. We'll get to that later. But when you plug all of them in, it once again reminds me of <laughs> poor Shuriken and probably my favorite accessory, a slice of pizza. You can see that there is some kind of thing inside of it and a power icon. Well, does that mean I can push it and it'll say something? It's time to contain the ooze. This is a magnet that activates the figure's light-up feature, which requires two LR621 batteries not included. The light-up feature is fantastic. I love that it's just a white LED. A great recreation of how the turtles looked in the comics, which I never read, of course. But even with the lights off, the white eyes are striking. And the head sculpt in general is really good, too. Looks like a Ninja Turtle without looking silly. But that's not all the accessories. Far from it. You notice I never mentioned how to attach any of this stuff? Well, for the Swords and guns, it's simple. Take the katana out of the sheath. That's it. And that taps right into the hand. Wrap the fingers around. Same with the daggers, same with the gun. But for the shield and general weapon storage, it's a bit more complicated. A massive miscellaneous black plastic with no instructions on how to use them? Why does that sound awfully familiar? This pile is not as annoying. Throughout the entire figure, you'll see some yellow circles on the shoulders, the shell, the belt, and a pair that's cl ow, and a pair that's cleverly hidden on the arms. You'll probably need a tool to get these off. I all of these holes are where all of this stuff is gonna plug in. Two samurai sword connectors, two pistol connectors, I thought they were revolvers, one rifle connector, two dagger connectors, two dagger and arm connectors, and of course, a special part for the shield, which looks great when plugged in. But the shields have their own flip-out pegs, which can plug into any of the holes. Every hole's a goal. I really dig the shoulder armor look that you see in the promo pictures, but there's really no correct configuration. You can just do whatever you want. Or to phrase it how Heat Boys phrases it, the weapon accessories can be combined in various ways, either by referring to the official pictures or by yourself. And Lord knows I'm used to doing things by myself. 
And finally, a beautiful looking base. Just in case he had doubts if this figure was officially licensed. Yes, it is. Not only is this a cleanly printed logo, it actually functions like a real manhole cover. Don't ask me what I've been doing in the sewers. And that reveals a compartment where you can put it in your All the little bits. Oh, how I love that. Anything that you can't store on the figure, you might as well store it in here. And as you can see, there is a hole at the top of the base, which can receive this die-cast metal rod. You can either go long or short, size doesn't matter. If you want the figure closer to the ground, you'd go with the short one. And for aerial displays, the long one. Attach the rod of your choice, and then you get a choice of two cradles. One straight, and one gay. And one angled. Plug in the one you want, and zero guesses on where this plugs into. Mm. Uh... Uh, uh, ah! that? A really cool stand with a lot of potential, but it would be even better if we had some sort of poseable rod, and if the cradle connection wasn't so loose. But if you really wanted more stand options, just buy your own. But a dynamic stand doesn't really mean much without some dynamic... Posability. Ball joint at the head. Every ball joint can be a swivel. An opening mouth, which would make more sense with the upcoming Wrath figure. If you know, you know. An extending neck. Hidden joint at the base of the neck, which when you combine it with the ball joint at the head, can look up that far and look down that far. Butterfly joint. Shifting shoulder pad, which shows off some of that inner frame, which, if you couldn't tell just by looking, is die-cast metal. Ooh. And it's everywhere throughout the whole figure, so you can bet that this figure is hefty. But anyway, rotation at the shoulder. Shoulder, a really tight joint, like most of the joints on this guy. Arm moves out, bicep swivel, double bend at the elbow, which activates a shifting armor gimmick. Always appreciated. Wrist swivel, slight hinge joint here, and a full hinge joint here. Ball joint at the thumb, hinge joint, hinge joint at the thumb. The fingers can spread, and a hinge joint, hinge joint, hinge joint on each finger. So he can't quite flip you off, but at least he can. While you can't see it on first glance, there's a hinge joint and hinge joint here, which allows for a great ab crunch. And on top of that, the shell can bend to cover up that gap. Not much in the way of an arcing back, but that's okay. Bit of side to side, a beautifully tight waist swivel, thigh thingies can shift down so they don't get in the way of the rotation at the leg. Can't move back that far. No ratchet joints at all, but the tightness of these friction joints makes up for that. A beautiful spread. Thigh swivel, double bend at the knee, get a good look at that shifting armor feature, and once more at the knee. Nice. The knee pad can shift. Ankle swivel, up and down. A beautiful ankle pivot, a mid foot bend, and individual toes. Yes! Oh. Posability on this guy is amazing, and really fun to pose as well. Solid as shell. Just a great time to play with. You don't even gotta worry about paint chipping from my experience. Both the flat paint and the glossy paint feel very durable. He's gonna look great on any TMNT display, especially with that imposing size. Size comparison time. Here's Figma Modic Economy, Haya Toys Godzilla, Magic Square Light of Peace, my previous review, the Metagate Air King, not Pterosaur, and two older figures that would be nice to have right now. The March of Time is relentless. Like I said before the size comparison, this guy would look amazing in any TMNT display, which is a shame for me because I have no TMNT display, but I might soon because this figure looks excellent, feels excellent, and has a great variety of accessories. I I might just pick up the rest of Heat Boy's upcoming TMNT mechas, especially Shredder. God damn! But there is another Heat Boy's Leonardo figure that I'm really looking forward to, and wouldn't you know it? There's no escaping it. Till all are one. So, went to TFCon last week, thanks for saying hi. Might talk about my experience next time. And of course, I bought some stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. Point is, I've got options. 